childhood dream was to become a marine biologist. And because every winter my family went to Jamaica for two weeks and I was a diver. And so I would dive around on reefs and see all these kinds of interesting things. And so I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then when I got to college, I discovered that what marine biologists do is um, sit in laboratories with little test tubes and, and small experiments, at least most of them do. Um, at least at Harvard, they didn't have the kind of uh, marine biology where you could go diving around on coral reefs. So instead, I did other things. I started reading books. I mean, I had always read books. Um, and then I discovered that someone would actually pay me to read novels. Um, and so it's like a baseball player who says, you mean they pay me to do that? So to me, getting a chance to read a lot, and at least that was what I did at first, then obviously I added a lot of other things to that. But it started by just saying, wow, I really like to read. And that's an area where you can read. And then the other great thing was in the academic world I discovered, you didn't have a schedule, and you could, or you could set your own schedule, so no one told you what to do. Um, and as one friend of mine has said, you've never had a job in your entire life. And that's probably true. No one has ever really told me what to do, when I should do it, how I should do it. So I like that. So one of the things, I love a lot of different things about being in Central Asia. Um, first of all, it's like Russian culture, but not like Russian culture. So it, you, they're always being surprised by things that look familiar, but then turn out to be a little bit different. Um, the people here are incredibly hospitable and open. They're not xenophobic at all, which is really nice. So if you're going to live someplace as a foreigner, it's nice to live someplace where people are quite open to foreigners being around. It's also nice where there aren't that many foreigners. So it's not like living, I don't know, in Dubai where everybody's a foreigner here. Most people are from here. Um, and so you get a chance to, to see the way people actually live um, and see a very changing environment because this is a part of the world that was quite isolated and quite a backwater for a long period of time. And now it's opening up to the world and seeing how that process actually works is fascinating. I also came ultimately to study nationalism. And since the Kazakhs and the Kyrgyz also are creating their own national states and cultures right now, to me, it's like a living laboratory of the kind of things that I study. So that's also really interesting. I'd like to turn the university into something that would look like a university to someone who came from a part of the world where we have real universities. Um, I, this university still very much looks like what a Soviet university looked like 25 years ago, which was probably okay in its day and time, but that day and time has long passed. And so now it looks very old fashioned. Um, it's still a place where most of the time people come to be told things um, instead of a place where they come to explore their curiosity and, and figure things out for themselves. And that's a very big transition to make. So I hope we make that transition over the next five years. Obviously, there's a lot of small steps along the way. I mean, we need new facilities and new people and, and different attitudes. But, but ultimately, five years from now, if you come, I hope the place will look like a really fascinating exciting liberal arts college with a business and economics focus. So, and I mean, you know, there's not that many models for what a university should look like. So when you say, what should the university look like in five years? I mean, what you want are the kinds of students who come and are very self-starting and very demanding. Um, you want faculty who are able to meet the demands of those students but still recognize that their job is to teach them. So it's not, they're not just you know, giving in to the consumer demands. They, they have their own ideas of how education should work. And the university should enable that. And ultimately, there should be five or six or 10 areas of intellectual achievement where the university is considered to be an international player, where if you care about that topic, um, you would really want to come here. Um, obviously, no university even the biggest is a universe that covers the entire universe. So you have to pick and choose. And the smaller the university, the more you have to pick and choose. So we will have to, to do that. But you know, we want to be in areas that are important. So this morning, we had a meeting about creating an agricultural economic center. That's a hugely important topic for Kazakhstan. It's a hugely important topic for the world. Um, question of, of sustainability and food sources is a question that's not going anywhere. 
if we can build a great center to study that for the whole Eurasian region, people will care about us. So what gives me hope about this country is that there are a lot of young people. It's not a country where the population is dying off. Um, the young people want to join the world and they want to be given the tools to do that. They don't always know what those tools are, but they want to have them. Um, and there are sufficient resources, at least in principle, there are sufficient resources available to do the job that has to be done. Um, so I think that the combination of, of resources and people, and there's also enough human resources, though that's probably the most difficult part, but, but there are sufficient human resources to, to find and put together into interesting teams. I think when you do all those things together, you can create something great. So that's a, that's a very difficult question. I think that, that the best advice I could give myself now or five years ago is look for opportunities, but don't always think you know what they are. Um, you, you need to have some vision of, of where you want to go, but exactly how you want to get there and what's the best way to get there is not always the most obvious way. So try to keep an open mind to various possibilities and don't just say, oh, you know, that won't work because. There's a very strong tendency, especially in this part of the world, for people always to say no as their first default answer and you have to get, get around that. But I think you have to get around that in yourself too. You always have to say, wait a minute, is there a way this problem can be solved? Um, and ideally, is there a way it can be solved that other people haven't tried so you can do something new and original and interesting? Um, so I think always look for something original, always look for something um, that's, that's uh, a, good, a better way of doing things and, um, and try to have fun doing it.